What's good, everybody? It is the Super Triple JET here, and today is the 25th anniversary of Resident Evil, and I decided to make a ranking video on the Resident Evil franchise, and I'm only gonna do the main games because that's what most people actually play. But if you guys want me to do the side games like Revelations, Dark Side Chronicles, or Gaiden? Tell me in the comments down below. But today will be my ranking on the Resident Evil series. Let's get this started. My number 12 pick will be Resident Evil 5. And I know it's kind of weird to say that uh, Resident Evil is my least favorite from the main titles. And it's just because I don't find the story that entertaining. Like the game is fun because, you know, you know, there's a lot of action, action, shooty, shooty, bang, bang, because that's what this game became. But I was not really fond of the story. And I believe the majority of this game, the story was just kind of boring. It didn't get good until we got to the laboratories. And that's when I really got kind of entertained but basically the entire story was just kind of weird to me still fun don't get me wrong i don't know i don't find this game super duper hype when i play this game it's very fun to play with co-op don't get me wrong but you know it's just not that entertaining plus plus this game took a lot of elements from resident evil 4 and i know some of you guys are gonna be like wait a minute the older games did take a lot of elements from their previous games yeah but those games were made in a shorter time span this had four years, and it was very, very similar. It was just kind of annoying. Plus, the ending got me really, really mad because I don't understand why Sheva was the one to kill Wesker instead of Jill. I know Jill was weak, but she went through that whole desperate escape, but it should have been Chris and Jill to do the final blow on Wesker, not Chris. Sheva. And I know some of you guys are confused why I put 6 over 5. And that is just because I find this game more entertaining than I do Resident Evil 5. I don't know. I know the story is, is kind of dumb. Like, very, very dumb. But I gotta say that I really enjoyed the gameplay in this game. Plus, I actually did enjoy the characters in this game, even though they were part of a really bad story. I really enjoyed Jake and Sherry as characters. I really enjoyed that they brought back Sherry Birkin again and used her in a bigger role, which was very, very dope. And Jake as a new character was great. And it's so cool that he's actually the son of Albert Wesker. And that's so dope. And it was really cool how they did it. It was really cool seeing Leon and Chris in the same game for the first time. So that was dope also. But super, Leon and Chris were in the same game together. It was called Dark Side Chronicles. But overall, I gotta say that there was a lot of cool things in this game that I enjoyed. And that's why it is above Resident Evil 5. My number 10 spot would be Resident Evil Zero. So, a lot of people hate Resident Evil Zero. No? And I kind of understand why, because it gets kind of boring after the train sequence. And yeah, they're kind of right. They are completely right why they should, like, really shit on this game. But I do like this game. I'm not going to lie. The game is very entertaining. I really like Rebecca as a character i know shinji mikami hates this character but i actually do like rebecca as a character and i really enjoy billy collins as a character and rebecca and billy's relationship is very good in this game i really wish billy would come back but whatever overall this game is kind of weird don't get me wrong because the main antagonist is a leech queen and that's when you think about how crazy this franchise really is where a leech queen takes over a body yeah it's kind of weird so that's why I'll put this at 10 because sure there are cool things like switching players and stuff but it is kind of weird and does get kind of boring even the final boss fight was not that exciting my number nine pick will be Resident Evil 3 remake so a lot of people really don't like this game because how short the game is and they took away a lot of things from this game so it does get a lot of hate but i really do enjoy this game there's a few problems don't get me wrong and i really don't like carlos's scenarios in the game but i gotta say this game is kind of fun i really enjoy playing it especially when i just want to play something really quick and i just want to be something fast you know i got resident Evil 3 but what really does save this game for me is the performances of each character i'm not gonna lie jill and carlos in this game are very very good I like these versions of the characters, and this is my favorite version of these characters. So, I was very impressed at how their character and personalities, how they were changed. And I did enjoy Nemesis. I just wish he was there a little more. But his design, I did enjoy. And 
and I did enjoy his boss fights. They were just kind of short like this entire game. So I do enjoy this game, but it just has problems for being short and removing a lot of things from the original. That's why it's in my number nine spot. My number eight spot, and a lot of people might get mad over this, but it will be the original Resident Evil 1. I know some people be like, yo, this game is a classic. How could you put this this low? And yeah, I get it, but but to be honest, the reason why I have it here is because the Resident Evil remake is a hundred times better than the original game. But this is a very enjoyable game. And I get it. Some people might say that this game is super out of date, and you know, they're not wrong. That's one of the reasons why they remade this game for the GameCube. And the reason why a lot of people should go check this out, because this is the first resident evil game but to be honest this game is kind of skippable when you got the remake one of the reasons to go back to it is obviously for nostalgia reasons but this is a really good game even with the ridiculous voice acting the game is still entertaining my number seven spot will be resident evil 7 biohazard so this game was very exciting for me because this was during the time where resident evil was kind of in a downfall and we needed a good Resident Evil game that brings people back to the franchise. And Resident Evil 7 did a great job doing that because they did something new that gets newer fans to join this franchise and check it out by making this game first person. And the reason why this game is at number 7 and not higher is because I personally did not like Ethan as a character. He was a bland character with no personality and you're telling me he's going to be the main character of this game? It was just kind of weird that they did that, and I hope in Resident Evil 8, they fix it by giving them more personality. But the boss fights were very interesting, and the puzzles weren't that great, but but they weren't terrible either, and I was kind of okay with the puzzles because we haven't had puzzles in Resident Evil in a while, so I have to give this game some credit of bringing back some old elements from previous Resident Evil titles. My number six pick would be Resident Evil Remake. So Resident Evil Remake was an impressive remake because they literally got the original game, cleaned it up a bit, and made the game a lot better by fixing all the problems that the original had, like, like the bad voice acting. Plus they added some things like Lisa Trevor and the Crimson Heads and also changed enemy spawns for people that remember from the original game will still be surprised. So it was an improvement overall and it was super faithful to the original game to the point where even the story was the same. But one of the biggest problems I have with this game is that they did not find a way to put a canon ending in this game. In the original, it made sense why they didn't really need to make a canon ending because it was supposed to be a one-off game and not a franchise that would last 25 years. So for the remake, they did not add at least another ending that has all the characters surviving so we could rely on that as an official ending and not make it a puzzle piece of saying oh which happened like oh jill did play the piano here and chris met rebecca right there and barry survived and it just they should have added another ending where all of them survived or explain how did all of them survive my number five spot would be Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. So this game is kind of weird because this was made very fast because they wanted to make a Resident Evil game for the PS1 one more time before they get to the PS2 era. So they decided to make Resident Evil Nemesis and that's one of the reasons why the game has a lot of the same assets as Resident Evil 2. But even then, there's a lot of things I really enjoy about the game. Well, this was the first game to introduce the creating bullet system, and this was also one of the games where a lot of the items that you look for would not always be in the same spot. And I know that's kind of weird to be excited about something like that, but back in the PS1 days, that was very interesting how they did that. But obviously, the star of the show was Nemesis. And Nemesis was a great antagonist for this game, and he is super iconic. And what I really liked about this game is that even though Nemesis was scripted, I really like how he felt like he was chasing you around the map, which was very dope. My number four spot would be Resident Evil Cold Veronica. And before any of y'all says, yes, this game is part of the main franchise. So much so that this game is very important 
for future titles, especially Resident Evil 6. So yes, this game is part of the main franchise. Plus, this was supposed to be Resident Evil 3. So a lot of people find this game very weird because it kind of starts walling out with a couple of concepts of this game, especially with the whole incubation, the whole incest vibes that this game has, and the first time we actually see Wesker with superpowers. So it kind of turned people off, but I really like this game. What I really like about this game is, first of all, we're continuing off Claire's story because we kind of got like a cliffhanger from Resident Evil 2 where she still wants to look for her brother. And the game was very interesting just because it was on the Sega Genesis and it had a lot of upgrades. The fixed cameras is the best in this game because they added a new dynamic fixed camera angle where it doesn't have to switch camera angles, it moves while you're moving. So I know that's kind of weird to be impressed about it, but back in the day, that was pretty dope. Plus, the Ashfords are my favorite antagonists from the franchise. And yeah, they're one of the reasons why people found this game kind of weird because yeah, their relationship is kind of weird and a lot of people will find it disturbing. And I'm not gonna say what kind of relationship they had, but it was kind of weird and it was hinted a few times. But they were clones and that was the first introduction of something like this that it got super duper science fiction-y that some people weren't vibing that much. But I did enjoy this game. A lot of the weird aspects were kind of entertaining for me. The kind of downfall I had for this game was obviously Steve as a character. They did not write him correctly and that's why he's very different in the Dark Side Chronicles retelling of this game. And for Chris's part of the game, my only concern is his scenario was kind of fast. This is an amazing game and for anyone that has not played this game, go play because I know some of y'all didn't touch this game because it doesn't have a number on it. My number 3 spot would be Resident Evil 2 OG. So a lot of people would consider this one of the greatest games of all time or one of the greatest Resident Evil games of all time and I kind of see why people are saying it because this game was very impressive and a huge upgrade from its predecessor in so many ways. First of all, the voice acting wasn't horrible in this game. It was bearable, which was cool because, you know, you know how the original voice acting went. But this game is amazing because they actually added a little bit more horror features in this game than the previous title, which was cool also. And they added a lot of things like the zapping system in this game, where if you get a certain item from your side of the story and you play the B scenario, you won't be able to get that weapon. Plus the atmosphere was really dope in this game too because they found a way to make something like a bright room feel super scary. And the first introductions of the liquors which were terrifying when you first see them in Resident Evil 2. Plus this game had one of the more challenging puzzles within this series which was kind of interesting and introducing Claire and Leon and showing how they interact with each other during the whole story where they meet up from time to time was kind of interesting. I find it very cool compared from the original where you never see a lot of these characters interact with each other. Like sure, they're there, but they're not there that often if you know what I mean. Plus, I really enjoyed the boss fights in this game, even though some of them were very simplistic like the Gator one. I gotta say that a lot of them with William Birkin, especially his third form I say was very cool and the mutant Mr. X was also a great fight too but this game also suffers with a lot of inconsistencies because a lot of people believe that the canon story is Claire A. Leon B but funny enough both of the stories are canon just there's some things that happen within each story that make the story and that's my concern about this game because this doesn't really show an accurate depiction of what happened in Raccoon City. We are just supposed to take bits and pieces from it, like Resident Evil 1 did. But overall, this is an amazing game, and there is a reason why people consider this one of, or not the best, Resident Evil game. Obviously, I don't, because you know, this is barely number 3. My number 2 spot, and some people probably guess what my number 2 spot is already, but Resident Evil 2 Remake. And yes, I 100% believe that the remake is superior than Resident Evil 2 1998. I know some of the arguments I'm going to make is going to be kind of unfair because this is a newer title, but I am going to point out those points. 
I really like the dynamic between Leon and Claire. I really like how realistic they are as characters and they pretty much act their age and I love how they act among each other. Yeah, it's unfortunate they didn't really see each other during the story compared to the original, but they just feel real and especially for Claire where she's acting super flirty around Leon and obviously it works with her character, especially in her lore that I'm not going to explain that much about, but it works for her and I love her relationship with Sherry because she still acts like a big sister type character with her. Yes, she did act this way in the original Resident Evil 2, but like I said earlier, this feels more realistic. In giving more story with Leon and explaining a lot more why he joined the police force, that he just likes helping people and stuff, that was very interesting. And having this different Leon voice is kind of interesting and it works for this version of Leon because he's playing a young 21 year old who just joined the police force. So it works out. Even though I would have preferred Paul or Matt coming back as Leon, I think Nick did a great job for this version of Leon. And what was cool about this game is they added a lot of concept they had for the original RE2 and they added in this game like giving it a trench coat or giving Mr. X a fedora which was very cool. But speaking about Mr. X, he is the star of this game. How he follows you around and because we have this new technology, any kind of noise that you make, especially with your gun, he will find you, which was an interesting thing they added in this game because Mr. X never really did that in the original. So it was cool that they gave it to this version of Mr. X and always being a big threat with both Leon and Claire. And William Birkin's redesign is so dope. And you see how he's reacting to the G Riders in him, how he's shaking a lot at the beginning because he's still trying to fight off the virus. And my favorite part about the game is they made this game over the shoulder. I really love the older shoulder in Resident Evil. And a lot of people did not want this game to be over the shoulder. And I'm glad Capcom did it. I find the game a lot scarier in over the shoulder than I do fixed cameras. But, you know, that's just my opinion. You know, a lot of people have different takes on the fixed camera over the shoulder aspect. But my number one pick, and if y'all knew me, for a long time, y'all knew this was going to be number one. But my favorite Resident Evil game is Resident Evil 4. So Resident Evil 4 is considered one of the greatest games of all time. And this game shows why. This game was the first Resident Evil to introduce the over shoulder aspect. And because of this, this game changed video games forever. So this game is very important for a video game. I know it's gonna be kind of weird to say, but I gotta say I enjoy every aspect of this game. I enjoy the characters, even though some people do not like Ashley, I really enjoy every character in this game, especially for Leon and Ada. And these characters became iconic because of this game. A lot of people give this game a lot of hate because this was like the downfall of Resident Evil, because this is when the game started becoming more actiony. But I personally would disagree, and I would say that it started that in Resident Evil 3. But I digress. I really enjoyed this game because of how they implemented more horror and action into one game. And a lot of people will disagree on me with that. But I do believe that this game had a good amount of horror and action. And I think it balanced it out perfectly in this game. And sure, it was different because they added the merchant and stuff where you're able to buy weapons instead of finding weapons. And this game didn't have zombies. So it was a drastic change among... Resident Evil fans, but I enjoyed every minute of it. From dealing with Dr. Salvador, from dealing with the Knights, from dealing with the cult members, a lot of the boss fights like El Gigante, like Zalazar, like Jack Krauser. Even though Jack Krauser's boss fight was kind of disappointing, I still think the boss fight is very cool. And I really love the mercenaries in this game. And yes, Resident Evil 3 did have mercenaries, but Resident Evil 4 was the one that made it have this template. Plus, it had a little bit more side content, like separate ways, and plus they added quick time events, which I very enjoy. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I love quick time events was because of Resident Evil 4. But, yeah, I very enjoyed this game, and everybody that knows me knows I love this game very much. So, yes, Resident Evil 4 is my favorite Resident Evil game and my favorite video game of all time. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and if you guys want me to do a part 2 with the side games like Dark Side, Chronicles, Resident Evil Survival, Revelations, 
and etc tell me in the comments down below so thank you for watching please subscribe i'm out deuces